I'm gonna show you how to make the easiest wine you will ever make in your life. I've got a video about how to make wine in mason jars. Uh, one of them has uh, well over a million views. And uh, this is so much, so much easier. All you need is three things. You need some fruit juice of some sort. In this case, this is pomegranate, acai pomegranate, and apple juice. I've also got some grape I'm gonna do, but we'll do these two for right now. These are half gallon bottles of fruit juice. Two quarts, it says it's right there on the label. What you will do is pour off two cups. It's full right there, measure off two cups and just drink it or save it for another batch later on. But two cups that needs to be drained off of here. We're gonna put in sugar and we're gonna put in yeast and that's all we're gonna do. So let me get a measuring cup and get the sugar. Now you might ask what about sterilization? I guarantee you these folks sterilized this before they put it in there. The insides of this is quite sterile. So we're gonna put one and a half cups. The, the, the mixture is one cup to one quart of juice. One cup of sugar to one quart of juice. We have a quart and a half of juice. So we're gonna put one and one half cups of sugar. of sugar in one and a half quarts of liquid. Pour the sugar in. And yes, a funnel makes this so much easier. I'm gonna put one and a half cups of sugar in that. I wish I could tell you this was my recipe and I came up with this, but I didn't. This is Paw Paw's wine. He's got a bunch of wine making videos on YouTube. All right, so the ratio of yeast in this is one quarter teaspoons of yeast per one quart of liquid. We had a quarter and a half of liquid, so we'll need one quarter table, uh, teaspoon and then one, just a little bit more, a half of a quarter. There's one quarter teaspoon and not quite a quarter teaspoon. If you want to put a whole quarter, you could. Not going to hurt it. The yeast will eat up the sugar in there and then it dies. So about three eighths of a teaspoon of yeast. What kind of yeast? This is Flashman's instant yeast. You can get any yeast. That's all I could find. With the COVID thing going on, everybody and their brother bought all the yeast. So that's all the yeast I could find. I had to get that on Amazon. My store did not carry any yeast in the little Flashman's packets. The red, uh, red star little packets would be perfect for this. You wouldn't use a whole packet. You would just use a quarter teaspoon and then about a half of that quarter teaspoon, about three eighths of a teaspoon, or you could use two full quarter teaspoons. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. But I couldn't find it, so I had to buy this. They were selling the little packets on Amazon for like 15, 16 dollars, or I could buy a pound of it for like 12 or 15 dollars. So I opted for that. So after you've done that, we're gonna put the lid back on tight for right now. Not tight forever, but tight for right now because we're gonna shake it. And I'm not gonna show you all the shaking going on, but it'll sh shake it until it's absolutely, you cannot see any sugar in the bottom. Sugar, the sugar has dissolved. And we're gonna shake it until that happens and then we'll come back. Okay, we have shaken it up. That's the hardest part of it is shaking it up. Two or three minutes, it's gonna take you to shake it up. So once you see that there's no sugar on the bottom of it, all the sugar's gone, 
We're going to loosen that lid just enough to where when we squeeze on it, the lid moves up and down. See what I'm talking about? That way, when there's no pressure on it, the lid falls down and seals it. When there is pressure on it, the lid comes up and lets the pressure out. Now, why would you do that? Because why wouldn't you not just tighten it all the way down? Because if you tighten it all the way down, that thing's going to swell up like a dead pig in the sunshine. It has got CO2 in it, going to build up, and it could bust. So, again, loosen it up after you've shaken it. Loosen it up. For me, that was about a quarter turn or less until that lid does this. And you're ready to go. Store it in a place that is dark. If you have to put a paper sack over it, you can. Dark and a constant temperature. You don't want it somewhere where it's 50 degrees. That yeast has got to work. You don't want it somewhere necessarily that it's 150 degrees, okay? The yeast has got to work. Wants a constant temperature. You know, 70 to 80, 90 degrees. 70 to 80 anyway would be perfect. Uh, set it on top of your refrigerator. Set it on top of... Uh, uh, I don't know, somewhere, and uh, just make sure that lid is loose, a little bit, all right, and then set it and forget it. Now, what kind of juice can you use? I'm going to tighten that lid up because I'm fixing to, fixing to turn it up and show you. That says 100% juice. 100% juice. Now, we do look on the label. It says apple juice from concentrate, filtered water, apple juice concentrate. That's it. That and ascorbic acid, vitamin C. You don't want anything that's got a bunch of preservatives in it because the preservatives will probably kill that yeast. So I'm going to loosen that again until it moves up and down. Uh, but you can use grape juice, apple juice. And don't write me a comment and say, can I, but can I use something, uh, orange and pineapple and this and that? I don't know. Try it. You probably can. I don't see any reason why you couldn't. Juice is juice, all right? Make your lids loose and mix it up as said. Any kind of yeast should work, all right? Set aside, forget it for 30 days, 30 days. Don't touch it, don't shake it. For sure, don't shake it. You've done all the shaking you're ever gonna do to it. Don't ever shake this again, even when you're pouring it out, fixing to pour your glass, because that sediment is gonna be on the bottom. We're not gonna rack it. We're not gonna make it clear by racking it. It's gonna, everything's gonna settle to the bottom and everything in here will be clear down to about right there. And you're not gonna to wanna to drink that. So when you pour it, again, I'm gonna tighten it up so I can show you. When you pour it out, you're gonna pour it real gently. Pour your glass and then come back real slow and any sediment, which would be that yeast and the things, the sugar that the yeast ate, would be on the bottom. You don't want to shake them up. So, leave the lids loose and put it somewhere for one month. Don't even think about it for a month. And then come back and you're going to have you some pretty good wine. It's going to be probably around 18% alcohol. Probably higher alcohol than what you're going to buy in the store, which is typically 12%. This is supposed to be anywhere from 16 to 18, maybe 20. You could use a champagne yeast, and I'll, uh, I'll link to some yeast below, uh, below the video at Amazon's. Champagne yeast is gonna kick that alcohol probably up quite a bit, but you're gonna lose some of your fruit, fruity flavor. If you like a sweet wine, this is what you wanna make. Now, the first batch, make it just like this, just so you can get practiced at it. The next batch, if you thought that was too sweet for you, then the next batch, batch back off on your sugar. Do Instead of doing a, a, a cup and a half of sugar in this quart and a half, do a, a cup, a cup and a quarter, something like that. Experiment with it next time and bring that, bring that sweetness down if that's what you desire. But I like sweet, you know, sweet stuff. I'm a sweetaholic. So anyway, this is what we're going to do. And... I think it's going to be really good. So, again, thanks to Paul Paul for showing the whole world how to do this. And then I've, uh, I've shown you my version of it. 
and it's pretty much his version. So this is it. It's easy to make. Hardest part shaking it up. Rest of it, just get you a funnel. Don't try to pour, don't try to pour the sugar in without a funnel. Get you a, a clean funnel. You want the funnel to be clean, run it through your dishwasher or something. But that's, there's no sterilization. That's the good part about this. There's no sterilization because the inside of that jar is perfectly sterile. But for right now, just go down and do this for one, one jar, one jug, or two of your favorite, of your favorite flavor. All right, that's it. Make you some wine. Easy, easy, easy wine. This is TP2 making Pawpaw's wine. We're gone.